In this lesson, we are going to discuss the layers of the geosphere. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to describe how the layers of the Earth are arranged physically and chemically. The layers of the Earth may be attributed to a soft-boiled egg. Opening the soft-boiled egg, its eggshell would show some cracks on where the force was applied. We can also see an unevenness on the hardness of the egg white. And in the centermost part of the egg, we have a mushy yolk with some solid parts and some fluid parts. These three layers or parts of a soft-boiled egg are analogous to the layers of the Earth's geosphere that are most commonly known to us. The egg yolk is analogous to the Earth's core. The egg white is analogous to the Earth's mantle. And lastly, the eggshell is analogous to the Earth's crust. However, the layers of the Earth's geosphere are not limited to these three layers. As seen in the illustration, there are two ways on how to classify the two layers of the Earth's geosphere. The four layers on the left side are based on the chemical composition of the layers. The five layers on the right side are based on the strength and physical state of the layers. Let us first discuss the chemical layers of the geosphere. Starting from the centermost chemical layer, we have the Earth's core. This layer is mostly made up of iron with a significant percentage of nickel and other radioactive elements. It also includes lighter elements such as sulfur, oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. The middle layer is the mantle. Its major composition is magnesium oxide, which distinguishes it from the core and the layer above it. The mantle is divided into two layers which are also differentiated based on the dominant material found in it. Seismologists notice the velocity of the waves first drops abruptly in the upper layer, but slowly increases as the waves reach the lower layer. Thus, seismologists think that there might be two layers in the mantle. The first layer is the lower mantle which is composed of bridgmanite which is a type of perovskite. These minerals are made up of magnesium iron and calcium silicates. The upper layer is the upper mantle which is mostly made up of peridotites. These are dark colored igneous rocks that contain magnesium and iron and only a very small amount of silica. The uppermost or outermost chemical layer of the geosphere is the crust. The crust is formed through the differentiation of the earth. It was theorized that upon the cooling of the earth, lighter materials rose near the surface forming the crust. The land masses comprise the continental crust and the big bodies of water comprise the oceanic crust. The abundance of elements on the crust was studied using its rocks. Oxygen, silicon, aluminum, and iron are the abundant elements found on the Earth's crust. The continental crust is composed of many rock types. Its major component is granodiorite, which is a light-colored igneous rock. On the other hand, the oceanic crust is composed mostly of basalt a dark-colored, highly dense volcanic and extrusive igneous rocks which contain relatively high concentration of magnesium and iron. The differences in composition of the chemical layers of the geosphere result to a distinct break in the continuity of how the seismic waves travel in the interior of the Earth. Suppose a seismic wave originates from the Earth's core and will travel to the surface of the Earth. Once it reaches the mantle core boundary, the seismic waves will seem to have disappeared due to the changes in the densities of the rocks. This is what we call the Gothenburg discontinuity, named after the seismologist Benno Gothenburg. As the waves exit this boundary, the seismic waves will seem to appear again in the mantle and will change its velocity again once it reaches the Mohorovicic discontinuity. This is because the rock density in the crust is different from that of in the mantle. This discontinuity is named after Andrea Mohorovicic. In summary for the chemical layers, the layers are arranged based on the layer composition. This is relative to the density of the materials in which denser materials are said to have sunken and lighter materials are said to have remained above during the cooling of the earth. Let us now discuss the physical layers of the geosphere. It is composed of five layers based on the strength and physical state. The two innermost physical layers are the sublayers of the earth's core. These are the layers with different physical states. The inner core has the highest temperature because of the radioactivity in the layer. Iron can be solid at such high temperatures only because its melting temperature increases dramatically at pressures of that magnitude. On the other hand, the outer core is a fluid region because the pressure in this layer is not enough to solidify iron. The heat from the inner core is transferred to the outer core which will make the molten iron flow. The magnetic composition of the core, together with its motion, creates the dynamo effect which is responsible for the Earth's magnetic field. 
This makes the Earth as a big magnet. The Earth's magnetic field interacts with the solar wind and charged particles from the Sun that will be dangerous for its inhabitants. The reaction between the Earth's magnetic field and these solar particles are visible near the poles as the Aurora Australis or Northern Lights and Aurora Borealis or Southern Lights. The inner core and outer core are bordered by the Lehman discontinuity which is named after Inge Lehman who contributed in the study of the Earth's core. The layers above the core are made up of rocks as discussed in the chemical layers. However, these rocks have different strengths. The layer above the outer core is the mesosphere. This is known by its relatively high strength even if it experiences high temperature since it is in contact with the outer core. This layer is also the largest layer of the mantle. The layer above the mesosphere is the asthenosphere. It is about 100 km thick and is a region of the mantle that flows relatively easily. However, one must always remember that this layer is not liquid. It behaves like plastic because rocks in this layer can flow due to the deformation which it experiences. Lastly, the uppermost and outermost physical layer is the lithosphere. This is the layer of relatively high strength and cool temperature since it is so far away from the Earth's internal heat. The lithosphere includes the crust and the top of the mantle. It can be very thin, only a few kilometers thick under oceanic crust or mid-ocean ridges, or very thick around 150 kilometers under continental crust, particularly mountain belts. Putting the two arrangements of the layers of the geosphere side by side, we can see the relationships of their characteristics. For example, the upper mantle has a region of high rigidity as seen in the lithosphere and mesosphere, and high plasticity as seen in the asthenosphere. Another one is that the mesosphere is made up of two different rigid material types which are bitumenite and peridotite. And lastly, the core which is made up of the iron-nickel alloy exists as two physical states. To summarize this lesson, let us review the following key points. The layers of the Earth's geosphere are arranged in two ways physically and chemically. The chemical layers are arranged based on the composition of the layer. And lastly, the physical or mechanical layers are arranged based on the layer's physical states and rock strengths. And that ends our discussion on the layers of the geosphere.